All right, welcome to this very special edition of Calculus Class uh, from my basement. And we're going to be talking about Lesson 4.6, which is about summary of curve sketching. I'm recording this on my phone, so uh, we'll see if we make anyone motion sick. Hopefully you don't throw up by the end of this. But we are going to graph stuff. That's what today is about. We're going to sketch curves. Um, the first one we have is f of x equals 2 times x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4. There is nothing new in this section. What we are going to be do it, doing is taking our function, the derivative of our function, and the second derivative of our function, and pulling out all of the pieces that we can find out from it. Now, before we get into this, um, if you follow along on the notes that are also posted on Google Classroom, that'll help you out. But um, these are some things that we can find out just from looking at the function. We can find out the domain and the range. We can find x-intercepts by plugging in 0 for y. We can find y-intercepts by plugging in 0 for x. We can look at continuity. So these are things like looking for holes, gaps, asymptotes, so seeing if it's a continuous function. We can check on symmetry, and that may be the one that we've uh, forgotten a little bit. Uh, when we check for symmetry, we plug in negative x into the function. And if we get the same thing back, that means it's an even function, and even functions have y-axis symmetry. And if we plug in negative x and we get the exact opposite thing back, that means it's an odd function, and odd functions have origin symmetry. Remember, that's the 180-degree uh, rotation. So we can find that out just from the function. We can find vertical and horizontal asymptotes and end behavior. So all of that comes from just the function. Then if we take the derivative, we can find critical numbers, we can find relative extrema, and we can find out where it's increasing and decreasing. And then finally, with the second derivative, we can find inflection points and determine whether it's concave up or concave down. So let me walk you through this first problem. And we're just going to pull all of these pieces. I believe in your homework, it tells you exactly what it's looking for on all of these. So it's not like you just have to come up with them. Uh, so the first thing that we want to find is some x-intercepts. So let's see. To find x-intercepts, we're going to plug in 0 for y. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, and we just get this. Um, and I'm going to shortcut a lot of these things, uh, but we should see that x is uh, plus or minus 3. So I'm going to start a graph over here. Um, there's going to be a lot of pieces to it. But so far we have x-intercepts at plus or minus 3. Okay, and we'll be back to that graph. All right, the next thing we want to find are y-intercepts. Uh, we find y-intercepts by plugging in 0 for x. Oh, that was supposed to be a 0, sorry. Um, and when we do that, we get, um, let's see, negative 18 divided by negative 4, so it looks like 4.5. So we'll come over here. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our y-intercept. Okay, well, let's see, what else can we find out from this? Um, we can find domain and range. Um, well, at least domain, range is a little trickier. Uh, the domain is going to be all real numbers, except we can't plug in plus or minus two. The reason we can't plug them in is because we have vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes at plus or minus two. And that's, remember, that's just we set the denominator equal to zero. So back over here at our graph, there's our vertical asymptotes. Um, let's talk about a horizontal asymptote while we're on the subject of horizontal asymptotes. Uh, remember, we can find horizontal asymptotes by looking at its degree. The degrees are the same, so the horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficients. So y equals 2. So back over on our graph, there's our horizontal asymptote. Um, symmetry. Remember, to find symmetry, we are going to plug in negative x. So we're going to do 2 times negative x squared minus 9 over negative x squared minus 4. 
And when we do that, of course, we get the same thing back, the exact same thing that we started. So this is an even function, and it is going to have y-axis symmetry. Um, so, oops, symmetry. So let me just toss that up there. Y-axis symmetry. Okay, that'll be helpful. We can see we're already building that. And that's about everything that we're going to find from this. Oh, the limits, if we want to know about end behavior. This is what we talked about in 4.5, but the limit as x approaches infinity of that function is going to be 2, and the limit as x approaches infinity, negative infinity, is also going to be 2. So that's everything that we can find out just from the function. So now what we're going to need to do is find the first derivative and see what we can find out from that. So let me, I'm rewriting the function here real quick. All right, so here's the function again. I'm going to take the first derivative. Now, if you'd like, you can uh, distribute that too. It might make things a little easier. Okay, so first derivative, we're using a quotient rule. So we have low d high is 4x minus high d low is 2x over the square of what's below. All right, um, we're going to distribute through that, and we get 4x cubed minus 16x minus 4x cubed plus 36x. Um, we still have the denominator. Um, the 4x cubes are going to cancel, so it looks like I have 20x over x squared minus 4 squared. Okay, that is my first derivative. Okay, we are going to set that equal to 0 to find our critical numbers. Um, and when we do that, we're going to find that our critical numbers are, of course, uh, 0. And then also plus or minus 2, because the derivative is undefined there. We already know that those are asymptotes, but we still need to consider them. So now what we want to do is go to our number line, plug these points in, and we're going to plug into the first derivative, okay? Because we want to see where this function is increasing and decreasing. So when we do that, um, if you plug in something like negative 3 into this derivative, um, you get a negative. If you plug in negative 1 into this, you get a negative. If you plug in 1, you get a positive. If you plug in 1, you get a positive. Now, remember these, these are asymptotes. Okay, but at 0, we change from decreasing to increasing. So we have a relative minimum at the point 0, um, 4.5. We already know what that is. Okay, so that means back up here on our graph, it was decreasing and then increasing. This is a relative minimum here. Also, from this, we know that on this side of the asymptote, it's decreasing, and on this side of the asymptote, it's increasing. So think maybe it looks something like um, it's decreasing here, so maybe something like this. I missed the point, but you get the idea. And then it's increasing here. So that's kind of my guess for what this looks like, and it's symmetric. Um, to verify that further, we are going to have to find the second derivative. So uh, I'm going to have to come over here. This is why I'm using my phone. This takes up so much space. So back over here where I have some space, uh, the first derivative, again, was 20x over x squared minus 4 squared. And we're going to find the second derivative. And we'll be able to talk about critical numbers and concavity, not critical numbers, inflection points. Okay, so second derivative, we have low d high is 20 minus high d low. We're going to have to bring that 2 down. And then it's a chain rule, so then we need to multiply by a 2x. Oops, sorry, you can't see that. Over the square of what's below. OK, 
Okay. Um, from here, I think it's probably a good idea to factor out uh, an x squared minus 4. So that's going to leave us with 20 x squared minus 4 to the first minus that got factored out. So now we have um, 40, 80 x squared all over x squared minus 4. Oh, that wasn't squared. I forgot to square what's below, didn't I? To the fourth. And now one of those will cancel out. All right, so now we're just going to distribute and combine like terms. Oh, so we have 20x squared minus 80x squared is negative 60x squared minus 80 over x squared minus 4 cubed. That's our second derivative. So our potential uh, inflection points, we're going to set that equal to 0 and find those. Um, when we do that, we get, boy, what's that going to be? Um, so again, we have plus or minus 2. Again, those are, those are asymptotes. And then when we set the numerator equal to 0, uh, that's going to be x squared equals 80 divided by negative 60, negative 4 thirds. No, oh, those are imaginary. We don't have to worry about those. So it doesn't look like there are any inflection points. Uh, but we can still check for concavity. So we're going to do our number line. We're going to put negative 2 and 2 on the number line. And this time we're going to plug into the second derivative to see what's happening as far as concavity. So if we plug in something like negative 3 into this thing, um, we get a negative value. We plug in something like 0 into this, uh, we get a positive value, and then we get negative over here. Okay, So it is concave down on this side of the asymptote, concave up in the middle, and concave down. So now we're going to go back to our graph and make sure we have that, and I think we already do. It is concave down here, concave up in between, and then concave down again. So our original graph is pretty good, I just totally missed that. So that's what this graph looks like. Uh, there were no inflection points. So that is a summary of curve sketching. Problem number one.